Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. Is prophecy being fulfilled today? Is it? You might, you might think, you might think, well, no, I don't see any prophecy being fulfilled. Yet, it could be fulfilled without our even realizing it. It could happen. So, we see now Russia involved in the war in Ukraine. We see, uh, we see Israel with the Muslim uh, fighting. We see ourselves with in Iraq a possibility of us going back into Iraq and fighting anew. And uh, we see there's a lot of terrorism around the world. But what does that have to do with prophecy? Well, my purpose today is to explain that there are prophecies that are being fulfilled today and we may not even be aware of it. I have two booklets that we're of we're offering today, and the first booklet is, Why Do You Observe Sunday? Well, most Christians keep Sunday, and most Christians go to church on Sunday, but do they, uh, do they really know why they observe Sunday? It says here that the Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. Did Jesus keep the Sabbath? Did his disciples keep the Sabbath? Did any of them uh, uh, teach that we should now observe Sunday? And the second booklet is God's Holy Days. Did you know that God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation? Now, how, how would you know if, if what the plan of salvation is? How would you know? Well, God has outlined them because of his holy days. He's outlined each holy day that has a part in the plan of God. You can have these two free booklets. You can have a DVD of this program. Just call the number on the screen and we'll have somebody waiting to take your order and we'll send it out immediately. Well, we're going to go into the program now. And the question again is, is prophecy being fulfilled right now? Are we aware of any prophecies that are being fulfilled now. Well, let's go to Jesus Christ, the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24. And here we have Matthew chapter 24, and we'll start here in verse 1. It says, Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things, all of these beautified buildings? They were gorgeous. He says, Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming? Coming for what? Coming for what? Coming to rule over this world. Now, many I watch many Christian programs, and uh, they talk about going to heaven. Uh, when you die, you go directly to heaven, we're told. And uh, it seems like the, uh, the ideal thing uh, uh, that we go, that we're with Jesus Christ in heaven, that we're with God in heaven. Okay, now what would be the sign of your coming? Well, he's coming to rule. He's going to rule for a thousand years. And I hardly ever hear that. 
and of the end of the world. This word world is aeon, which means age. So what would be the end of the age and the beginning of the new age? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now this could be read two ways. They could read it to say that Jesus is the Christ and shall deceive many, or they could read it to say, I am, you see the person is, the Christ, the Messiah, and shall deceive many. Well, through the years we had both, both ways being fulfilled. People were saying that they're the, they're the Christ and deceiving, and they're saying Jesus was the Christ and deceiving. Verse 6, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Well, what's a rumor of a war? Back in King James' day, they didn't have uh, modern media like we have. Uh, they didn't have radio and TV and newspapers, so people would have r rumors of wars. Today, that same word actually means reports of wars. Reporters report wars, and every single day, you see wars being reported on the radio, on the TV, and in the newspapers. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. What's the difference between a nation and a kingdom? Well, a nation is one group of people uh, and it's a nation. We know what nations are. Nations are like England and France and the United States is a nation. What about kingdom? Kingdoms are groups of nations against groups of nations. And there shall be famines, which there are today, and pestilences. Those are diseases and we're reading in the newspaper about all kinds of diseases and earthquakes. We're reading about earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All right, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the some of these signs being fulfilled. Now, right here is a is the Wall Street Journal, Thursday, September. Fourth, I have it right here, and I'm going to read from page 13, A13. And it says here in A13, it says, tracking down the smallpox before it kills anew. They found vials having the smallpox, uh, vac the smallpox um, disease in vials. It was still alive. They had it frozen and they discovered these vials and they said that there's more vials around and before it was declared eradicated in 1977, smallpox killed as many as 300 million people in the 20th century alone. 300 million, far more than all the wars of that century combined. The danger is it could become a killer again. I had the vaccination when I was about five, four or five years old. That vaccination means nothing today. After about 10 years, five to 10 years, vaccinations mean nothing. So you're not covered uh, if you had your vaccination when you were a child, you're not covered today. Okay, let's go on. The, uh, what we're finding today is, in, like in Africa, we're finding the Ebola virus. It talks about that. There's various epidemics called pandemics. It says here, the risk, in this article, the risk of a global pandemic resulting from an inadvertent smallpox release. So this could happen or the virus's acquisition by terrorists is low, 
but recent events show that it also that it is not a risk to be dismissed as negligible. Let's find the lost and forgotten smallpox samples before they find us. And now Ebola is, uh, is going out of control in Africa. They're just not able to keep up with it. They need more people to, uh, to check and see where, uh, w what's happening to uh, this uh, Ebola. So um, we need to be aware of what's going on here. There are diseases that are making reoccurrent diseases, like uh, TB. There's a TB strain out there that there's no cure for, no cure for it. Also, there are venereal diseases like gonorrhea and syphilis that there's no cure for. The, the, these uh, super, super germs are very, very active, people coming down with diseases that there's just no cure for it. So we need to be aware. And uh, we also need to be aware of this earthquakes. In each 10 year period from 1900 to 1910, each 10 year period, all the way up to the last 10 year period, which was 1990 to 2000. In each 10 year period, there was roughly about 50 earthquakes with the, with the power of six, six power. Now, there, the last 10 years between 1990 and, or 1991 and the year 2000, that 10 year period, there were over 400 earthquakes of an intensity of six or better. This is incredible. There are earthquakes in diverse places. There's wars breaking out all over. You would think that after the, our Messiah came the first time and died for all mankind, you would think we would be able to, to deal with one another without wars. Where are these wars coming from? Why are people killing one another? Well, this is a prophecy that is coming about today, and we need to be aware of it. So, we're going to turn in our Bibles to Daniel chapter 11. Now, we'll, we're, we'll be back soon. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. living with diabetes and have Medicare or private insurance, here are some great news. Call United States Medical Supply today and we'll send you the smallest glucose meter in the world, absolutely free. It only takes a speck of blood and it gives me my results in five seconds. And there's no coding for easier, more accurate results. Don't let diabetes get in the way of living. Give us a call today at United States Medical Supply and get the smallest meter in the world for free. Get ready, America! The Affordable Health Care Act is here, and it's got everyone asking, how do I find affordable health insurance that's right for me? The answer is simpler than you think. Pick up the phone and call I Can Benefit right now. Waiting for you is a team of licensed insurance agents who understand health care reform and can help you find the right plan to take care of you and your family's health. Don't wait. Call now and get the answers you deserve and a price you'll love. Call toll-free 1-800-426-2163. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. 
With one phone call, you'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. It's a free service, so call now. Call now, 1-800-908-0987. Are you being denied the things you want because of bad credit? Say goodbye to bad credit and hello to credit repair. Call the credit repair hotline right now to start the process of repairing your bad credit and improving your credit score. Start rebuilding your credit today and begin working to qualify for the credit card, car, or home you've always wanted. Call now to start the process of repairing your credit. You're going to love how good your credit report can look. Call now. 800-809-1385. Welcome back to the program. Now, I've written a book. It's called World War III Coming Soon. I'm doing a book signing. Please come. Please come and meet the author. I'd love to meet some of my uh, listeners and those who view the program. Uh, you might have some questions. You might want to look the book over. Uh, it's going to be Saturday on uh, September the 20th. That's this coming uh, September 20th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it's going to be at the Barnes & Noble on University Avenue. So we're going to go do a book signing. And uh, you may want to just look the book over, see if, you wanna, see if you want it or not. And of course, ask any questions that you might have. So we'll be looking for you to come and visit with us on Saturday, September 20th. Now, we are, uh, we're back here in Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11, and we'll start in verse 1. That's Daniel chapter 11, verse 1. And here it says, <clears throat> in Daniel 11, verse 1, also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and strengthen him. And now will I show you the truth. Behold, there stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. Grecia is Greece. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion. Now he's talking about Alexander the Great <clears throat> and do according to his will. So Alexander the Great took over, conquered the Medes and Persians in 321 BC, 321 years before Christ. He was the world conqueror. And it says here, And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken. His kingdom was broken at his death and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. Now these four winds of heaven are the four generals that took over after Alexander the Great and not to his posterity. So None of his heirs, none of his children ever inherited the kingdom, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others besides those. So his kingdom also ended when the Romans took over. Now it talks about the king of the south, and it talks about the king of the north from verse 5 all the way up to verse 39. Now these are the kings of the north and kings of the south, which I'm going to explain. So we, we need to look at verse 40. And at the time of the end, right here, verse 40, shall the king of the south push at him. <coughs> now this is pushing uh, at him, the king of the north, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots. Well, we don't use chariots today, 
but the modern chariot is the tank. And with horses, well, today we use horsepower. We use various uh, armored vehicles and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass through. This is the king of the north. He shall enter also into the glorious land. This is, to, this is the land of Israel. And many countries shall be overthrown. Now, it names some countries here. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom. This is a, an old ancient name for the people of Turkey. The Turkey, people of Turkey are Edomites. Some of them know it and some of them don't. And Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. Now, Ammon is the capital, capital of Jordan. So these are people from the country of Jordan. They've tried as best they can to stay neutral. So they're, they're escaping. They're probably just giving up and letting the king of the north right, run right through their country. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. So the land of Egypt is going to be part of this king of the south. So we have, so far we have Turkey, we have, uh, we have Jordan, we have Egypt, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans. We know who Libya is. That was ruled by Muammar Gaddafi, who was deposed, and the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood have, uh, have, have the rule over Libya. And the Ethiopians are also a Muslim people. So we have people, we have identified here the kingdom of the south. And verse 44, but tidings out of the east and out of the north. So this is actually northeast. So north and east, northeast shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and to utterly to make away many. Well, what is, what's coming out of the northeast? Northeast would be the area of Russia and China. Whenever they see a vacuum, they jump right in. So they see a vacuum because the king of the north, who is the king of the north? We're going to identify them in just a moment when we go back to Daniel chapter 2. We're going back to Daniel chapter 2 and we're going to look at verse 36. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a dream. And it says, this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. You, O king, are king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fowls of the heaven, has he given into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. Well, following the head of gold was the arms and the breast of silver, okay? And those were the Medes and the Persians. Then coming down, coming down this statue was the belly and the thighs. Just uh, put the camera on me, please. Uh, for the, the belly and the thighs of brass. And that is the kingdom of Greece, starting with Alexander the Great. Then the two legs coming off of the belly and the thighs were legs of iron, represented by Rome. Rome took over the world. Now we come down to the legs of Rome, each, each leg, one leg in Rome and the other leg in Constantinople. Then we come down to the toes of those legs, ten toes. Ten toes represent ten Kings. Let's read it in, uh, in verse 44. And it says here, And in the days of these kings, 
It talks about the toes. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed? And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Okay, this, these ten toes represent the, the king of the north. What is the king of the north? It's ten nations in Europe. Ten nations in Europe are coming down to fight the ten nations in the, the king of the south, the Muslim nations. It's going to be a, a, a uh, it's going to be a resumption of the Crusades that there were eight Crusades that took place in the Middle Ages. This is going to be the ninth crusade coming down. So there'll be the ninth crusade. Well, prophecy is going to be completed. The ten nations are forming in Europe. Ten nations are forming in uh, the Arab Muslim nations. And we're going to see the outbreak of World War III coming soon. Please be awake. This is coming. World War III is coming very soon. Now, I'd like to have one more time to tell you about my book, World War III. We're having a book signing again. Please join us. Come by, visit with me at the Barnes & Noble on University Avenue, right at the university. And it's Saturday, September 20th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I'll sign your copies of World War III coming soon. In the meantime, why don't you order these two booklets, uh, God's Holy Days, right here. These God's Holy Days reveal to us his plan of salvation. You can know what God is doing next. Why do you observe Sunday? It's an interesting book. It'll only take you about 15, 20 minutes to read. Read both booklets along with your Bible. And... We, uh, we have an interactive Bible study every Saturday at 1 p.m. at a meeting room at 1701 East Missouri. Come and visit with us. Uh, call the number on the screen because sometimes we might not be there. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.